Time now, though, to talk takeovers at Old Trafford, that soft deadline set by the Rain Group who are handling the potential uh, sale of Manchester United passed at 10 o'clock on Friday. We know there's a bid in from Sir Jim Ratcliffe, back page of today's Sunday Mirror. I'll make United best in the world and give the fans a say too. We know there's also a big money bid in from Qatar and uh, possible North American and maybe even Saudi Arabian interest as well. Let's bring in Chris Rumford, who is the uh, communications director of the Manchester United Supporters Trust. Chris, uh, thanks for coming on the programme. Good evening. I have a copy of the open letter that you have penned for any potential bidders for Manchester United. Quite a lengthy uh, statement. I'll just pick out uh, one or two of the highlights as far as I was concerned. Uh, You say football clubs are different from ordinary businesses. Owners of football clubs, uh, just as all other supporters, should be giving to their club rather than taking from it for their own benefit. Is that realistic? Is that a realistic ambition? Well, look, I think the most successful clubs um, uh, do invest uh, in their clubs. And we can look at uh, lots of really good um, examples from, from this country and all over the world. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking for people who come in and invest in the club. Of course, it's legitimate for them to make a return on that investment too. The two things don't need to be sort of, you know, in conflict with each other. You also say the words football club should be restored to the badge on the Manchester United shirt. The club should commit to never again seeking to enter any competition similar to the European Super League. And you want a clear plan to maintain the affordability of match tickets for ordinary supporters. Just a few of the points that you've made uh, in this letter. What about in terms of the two bids that we know about? So Jim Ratcliffe um, possibly would have to borrow... Uh, in order to complete his takeover. Uh, Then you've got Qatar and all the moral issues that come with a bid from that part of the world. Where do you stand on those two bids? Yeah, I mean, we're pleased bids are coming forward, first things first. I think everybody wants to change at United and the Glazers' ownership after 18 years has certainly run its course. So we're pleased bidders are coming forward. I think there's big questions with both of them, though, and we, our message to both of them is come and talk to us, engage with us, explain your proposals. As you say, with one, there's questions about whether it would be financed by debt and whether that debt would be structured in the same way as the Glazers' debt, which hampered the club for so long. And with Qatar, there's a whole host of questions about sporting integrity, considering their ownership of PSG, you know, what happens when the two clubs play each other. Uh, And there's also wider questions about human rights, gay rights, women's rights, which, um, you know, are are important and, and, you know, uh, a lot of people are concerned about. Do you expect the bidders to listen and to come and be willing to engage in conversations with you? If I was buying a football club, I would consider the supporters the most important stakeholders. So, yeah, I'd want to talk to them. I'm not, I, I, you know, I'm not delusional. I don't think they're going to come along and agree with everything we say, but I would want to come along and have a dialogue. And we, we expect they will. Um, we are, you know, the, the fans are always there. You know, Must has 100,000 members. That's an awful lot of people who, you know, if you are successful in the bid for Manchester United are your most important, some of your most important stakeholders. So I would expect they would want a dialogue, but we're not naive enough to think they're just going to come along and tick to everything we asked for. But, you know, it's the, it's the, it's the start of that dialogue, I guess. Chris, I, I'm going to get Crookie's take on this as well at some stage, but do you think this is actually going to happen, a takeover? I mean, the, the Glaciers are not, are not stupid. The share prices have risen £14 since all this talk. So do you think they're going to be in the Champions League next year? I think this is all a front. Well, I mean, look, million-dollar question and a perfectly good question uh, to answer. I mean, the fact that the share price has risen risen so much could motivate them even more to sell because the price will have gone up. So it might make them think now's a good moment to sell. You know, we've had our ups and our downs in the last decade. There's been – we've come twice – we've come second, I think, twice in that decade. So maybe if we're on the up again – they might think now is a good moment to sell. But the reality is none of us can know. All I would say is if they, you know, they are getting a lot of rich, powerful, influential people to put a lot of time into bidding for the club, if they then don't go through with the sale, I think they might have made some pretty um, dangerous enemies.
Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a really good point. Uh, Chris, the question I asked right at the top of the programme was, would you be happy for your club to be state-owned or owned as a billionaire's plaything, potentially in the case of Sir Jim Ratcliffe, or should football still belong to the fans? What did you make of Simon Jordan's comments this week that uh, Manchester United fans have been shouting for years about wanting their club back? That simply isn't going to happen. Football has changed. I mean, we, we, uh, our, our group, you know, did begin you know, more than two decades ago trying to achieve supporter ownership. I think we're realistic enough to know that the value of the club now means that supporter majority ownership in the sort of short, medium term is probably unrealistic. What we seek is an ownership stake in the club, and that's what we would hope to agree with any new owner, that there is a means for fans to buy into the club, not be given a share, but buy into the share uh, club uh, with their own money, we're realistic enough to know that the next majority owner is not going to be the fans. What we want is that majority owner to work in partnership with the fans and create a route for fans to buy a shareholding. Brilliant stuff, Chris. Uh, thanks very much uh, for joining us on The Boot Room. That's Chris Rumfit, uh, uh, Communications Director of the Manchester United Supporters Trust. If you want to see their letter uh, in full, you can... Uh, find it on their website. It's a really good point you raised about the Glazers, and it's always been a suspicion of mine. I've voiced mm. it uh, on Talk Sport since it became clear during the World Cup that maybe the Glazers were looking to sell the football club, that, that maybe this could be some kind of a, a cunning plan from them to make it look like they wanted to sell, to uh, appease the supporters who've been protesting against their regime, to price it so high, £6 billion. They know that they're not going to get a bid uh, of that amount because, of course, there's a lot of work to be done um, on the stadium as well. I think it's going to be fascinating to see if they do go through with it.